Why would chemical topping be of interest? Um, as, as every farmer knows, trying to maintain profitability is, is utmost importance, and there's not much else you can do on labor saving for tobacco uh, because uh, labor is a, a very uh, significant cost throughout the production se season. So we're trying to look at other methods to try to reduce that manual labor. So uh, something else that we're trying to look at, which I don't know if that's going to work, is malic hydrazide residues. Uh, Eric was talking earlier about some of the residues, and MH is one of those that we're always looking at. So where this, uh, with this system that we're trying to put in place with some chemical topping, we're spraying it a little bit earlier in the season, so we might be able to get some, uh, some extra rainfall or something like that to try to reduce residues. Although I'm not so certain that our data this year, or well, from last year, is going to show that. So we're using currently labeled sucker sides, uh, MH, butylene, and fatty alcohols. That's already, uh, that's already labeled, so we don't have to worry about special labels or anything like that. We're just spraying them before you top rather than after. And also, purchasing modifying equipment is, uh, is not needed because we're already spraying already. OK, so uh, we all know that weather is always a consideration for anything you're doing outside in the field. And that's no different for this kind of system. Um, one thing that, that's more of a problem, I think, um, is variability of growth in the field. So if you're manually topping, you can go through and top the ones that's ready, come back, do another topping, uh, especially like with, uh, with dark tobacco. However, if you chemically top, you get one shot, so you might try to make sure that your timing is, uh, is better, uh, or try to at least represent where you want it to be. So it might not work in less than ideal situations whenever you have a lot of up and down in your field. So uh, of course, sucker side coverage, tobacco that's not straight, wind, lodged, can be a problem, but you're going to be spraying MH more than likely in those kind of situations anyways. So, uh, so one other thing that, that uh, Dr. Pierce and Dr. Bailey and I were looking at is uh, the number of leaves on the plant or the, le the length of the plant going into the barn. because. If your barn's not set up for bigger tobacco, that might be a problem if it ended up being uh, larger tobacco with more leaves. We didn't suspect that'd be a problem, but there might have been um, as, as time goes on. And first, uh, before I get into some data, I want to caution everybody that this is preliminary data. I hope that everything else throughout my entire project works out as so clean cut as this, but odds are that's not going to happen. So I wouldn't recommend yet going home and chemically topping all your tobacco. That would be not not ideal. So some of our objectives uh, was to just evaluate chemical topping efficacy on barley tobacco. So in doing so, we wanted to look at the appropriate rate of chemical and appropriate timing. And then also uh, look at different varieties because there might be some, uh, some differences in between a late maturity versus an early maturity. Okay, so most of you all probably can't see this picture in the back, but if you can see a flower in the plant, that is not ideal for chemical topping or well, any, anything really. No farmer would ever let that go to a barn. So we're trying to look at ways to prevent that from happening. And some of our treatments are working, and those treatments that you're seeing there uh, were not carried on to this year. So uh, it's a busy slide, but basically we have two locations, and this is uh, one of the tests that we put out. And that's looking at the different chemicals and different rates. And you can see uh, we use late maturing varieties at both uh, Murray and Spindletop. And then we had two manually top treatments. One would be like a grower standard, and then the other one was where we topped it and let the suckers grow. Kind of like a worst case scenario to see pressure. And then we had six chemically top treatments. Two of those had either a full or reduced rate of MH, and then Two of those had that same full or reduced rate of MH paired with a half a gallon per acre of butylene, which is a local systemic. And then we had just the local systemic only at a gallon per acre, so an increased rate, and then a fatty alcohol at 10%. If anybody uses 10% fatty alcohol concentration, you will see some burnt tobacco. And it does not top the plant either. That was one of the treatments I showed in the uh, previous slide. And uh, for the manually top treatments, we did 10% bloom, kind of kind of what a grower might see, and then the chemically top was all at 10% button. So if the button exceeded the top of the plant, you could see it without moving the leaves. That's when we were spraying if it was 10%. And we used a, a three nozzle directed spray per row, uh, 50 gallons per acre. 
So there's some pictures. Uh, I'm gonna kind of breeze through these, uh, but you can, of course, see some treatments that worked and some that didn't. So how, uh, how good was our chemically topped compared to the manually topped uh, as far as controlling suckers? So this graph uh, has weight of suckers per plant on the left, and it's in grams, so don't freak out. There's not 500 pounds of suckers. Um, and then this is our untreated control, which would be kind of like worst case scenario. And then if you notice over here, there's the butylene by itself and the fatty alcohol by itself. Not only did these not top the plant, they also had more uh, suckers compared to any treatment that had MH in it, as you can see by the, the lower bars. Uh, I'm not going to pay attention much to the, to the different locations, but they all kind of acted the same across locations. So our grower standard, uh, so this is kind of uh, looking pretty promising or at least exciting, is that any of our chemically top treatments, those four right here, are no different statistically than our grower standard. So we were able to get comparable results with sucker control as the grower standard as far as manually topping and then spraying. Okay, so how does that equate to yield? That's the big question. Uh, that's what uh, kind of drives us in the tobacco world is how much yield you can get along with every other crop. So this is averaged over Murray and Spindletop, and you can see that the three bars or locations uh, of the bars, this check and the uh, fatty alcohol and butrin, had significantly less yield than any of the other treatments. They also had significantly higher suckers. So something, again, that's exciting is that our grower standard is no different than any of our chemically top treatments that had MH in it. So our, our yields were not significantly different than the grower standard, manually topped at 10% bloom and then sprayed. So that was kind of looking at the, uh, the different chemicals we could try to use and the different rates, either full rate or reduced rate. So now we wanted to see what we can spray it at one time. So we used a uh, two gallon per acre MH paired with a half a gallon per acre butylin, and that was our topping agent. And then we either had a manually top treatment uh, that was sprayed or a manually top that was not, and then 10% button, 50% button, and then 10% bloom. And we also had a medium maturity variety, Tennessee 90, and then also KT 210 and 215, which are weight maturing varieties, depending on which location you were at. As you can imagine, if you were spraying to try to chemically top at 10% bloom, if you had it perfect, you would still expect there'd be 10% blooms in the field going to the whenever it's cut going to the barn. So that treatment right away uh, might just tell us what would happen at 10% bloom if you sprayed trying to top. So there's some uh, pictures of the MH uh, working on killing the top of the plant. Um, you can see the buds starting to yellow up in a couple of those pictures and some of those are later on in the season. Okay, so on this study, um, how does the sucker control compare? And basically, that's a lot of numbers uh, showing that, that pretty much every timing controlled suckers at each location and within each maturity. But back to what our, what our uh, objectives are is we want to top the plant and control suckers. The 10% bloom is not really topping all the plants in the field, so we're starting to think that that might be a little late, and we're trying to maybe target the 10% button and the 50% button. There may be a number in between there or between 50 uh, percent button and 10 percent bloom that might be better, but these are uh, the timings that we're looking at. But as you can see, our worst uh, numerically, well, these are all statistics, but we went from 95 to 99 percent control in the chemically topped and the manually topped with, um, with spraying afterwards. And then how did that equate to yield? Uh, after running statistics, one of the, the, or the early maturity, so the Tennessee 90 ended up being significant, and the late maturity did not. But however, they did follow the same trend. There's just some variability there. Uh, but basically, there's no difference in yield on the Tennessee 90, the early maturity, uh, from 10% bloom, 50% button, 10% button, and the grower standard. So that's pretty promising results for the first year uh, data of this study. We'll see what this year looks like. So now I wanted to move real quickly into some of uh, Dr. Pierce's slides that I stole from him before I came down here. 
And this is looking at some, some studies that he put out, this one specifically in 2013, next couple, uh, I think, are 2014. But you can see that uh, this is kind of his check uh, on the left, and then there's four chemically top treatments that are also included in my test, and then the, the grower standard. And we're seeing uh, pretty comparable yields across the board, or we're not seeing detrimental effects of chemical topping on yield. And the same can be said for that, only a little bit more, uh, more variable. However, uh, if it was going to hurt yield, you would expect that these four treatments here with chemically top might be lower than the grower standard or the, uh, the check. Okay, so now you might ask, how does that affect different leaf grades whenever you go to stripping? So this is at the, the farm level as uh, somebody would farm and you can't see much differences uh, other than the, the check as far as uh, if you want to focus on the red part of the bars on the tip grade. Uh, there's not really much difference uh, in tips until you go to uh, have it graded by some, some leaf buyers. <coughs> so this is buyer A and uh, in talking with Dr. Pierce, uh, maybe not so much with uh, Dr. Bailey, but um, we're tending to see that there's more tip grade in chemically topped treatments compared to um, manually topped. And that's buyer A and that's buyer B. Uh, you can see there's a little difference. So there'd be the grower, uh, kind of grower standard treatment that I refer to, and here's the four chemically topped. Okay, so in terms of trying to develop an ideal chemical topping system, you might say that it would be nice if we could have one application of one chemical solution that topped the terminal bud and inhibited suck, uh, subsequent uh, sucker growth with no adverse effects on yield, quality, or leaf chemistry, and then similar to in other production uh, of tobacco as far as cutting, housing, and stripping. So in summary, we're seeing some differences uh, or lack of differences in yield, and we're seeing some uh, differences in total weight of suckers per plant. So we're getting good control, and we're thinking that the pre-bud and early bud, which is 10%, 50% button, might be the area or the timing window to try to, try, try to hit if you're going to try to do this method of topping. And it must include MH. The butyrin and the DNA or in the fatty alcohol did not top the plant, nor did it really control the suckers. And it may be suited for more of a later maturing variety because we're uh, found out in driving from Lexington to Murray or from Princeton to Murray that uh, the early mature, or well, the medium maturity, like Tennessee 90, or even like an early, like 14 L8, you might show up on a Thursday, everything's fine, you're like, oh, I'm a week away, and then you show up on Monday and you're way too late on trying to make your application. So not only do the later maturing varieties might reach flowering later on in the season, but there's also a little bit less rapid change in growth when it's going through the reproductive stages. And uh, according to Dr. Pierce, we're possibly seeing that chemical topping might have a greater proportion of the yield going to tip. And uh, here's a list of some folks that's making this possible. And with that, if I have time, I'll take a question. If not, I'll see you at lunch. Thank you. <laughs>